Hello children, welcome to study table. On today's study table, we are going to uh, learn about the Abu Dhabi prehistory. This is the second chapter in our UAE Social Studies textbook. So, in this chapter, we will be recognizing and exploring the major archaeological sites in Abu Dhabi Emirate. Okay, you know that there are several archaeological sites in the UAE. But in this chapter, we are particularly looking into the Emirate of Abu Dhabi alone. Okay, so let's go. Now, these are the three archaeological sites which are found in the Emirate of Abu Dhabi in the UAE. The first one is a Hafid mountain in Alain city. Second is the Umalnar Islands in Abu Dhabi. And third, Hili, which is actually a village in Alain. Now, we are taking the first archaeological site now, which is Hafid Mountains. Hafid Mountains, as I said, it lies in Alain city. Okay, and uh, it is situated at the foot of the Jabal Hafid Mountain. You know Jabal Hafid Mountain, right? Jabal Jais and Jabal Hafid, uh, which is the highest mountain peak in the UAE. You know it's Jabal Jais, right? Okay, so this Hafid Mountains, it lies in the foot of the Jabal Hafid Mountain. And this is almost 5,000 years old. Okay, these tombs which are found. What you see in the picture here. What you see in the picture here, these are tombs. Okay, tombs, you know, they are burial places where the dead are buried. Okay, so these tombs can be seen if you go to these places now. And this actually marks the beginning of the Bronze Age in the UAE. Okay, uh, we'll see why it is so. Now, what you see on my left is the location of the Hafid mountain so in a UAE map if you are asked to locate the archaeological site of Hafid mountains this is where it goes okay now uh, now we are going to look into the particularities or the peculiarities of the symmetries that you find in the Hafid I showed you this is how the tombs of the Hafid mountains look like Okay, now we will see what is special with them. What is special about their structure we are going to see. Okay, now the symmetries of Hafid were also known as the beehive symmetries or hill symmetries since they were built like the shape of stone hill, you know stone hill, right? So almost like this it looks like, no? Look at the beehive. This is how the beehive looks like. Huh? So if you look at the, the symmetries, yeah, the tombs, of the Hafid mountains this is almost like a beehive so that's the reason why they are known as beehive symmetries fine now if you're looking into the architecture of these tombs how these tombs were built okay now each of these tombs if you see they comprises a single round or oval chamber it can be round or an oval shape with about two to three meters of width and if you look at the picture you can see these tombs were constructed of very rough rocks. They were not polished. These are not smooth rocks, right? From the picture, you can understand that these are just roughly cut rocks. They are not polished, nothing. The stones as they are were used to build these tombs, okay? And also, if you look at the entrance part, you can see that the entrance is very narrow. A narrow entrance. And this usually they built the tomb in such a way that the narrow entrance faces the south okay and uh, now the archaeologists have also found that or they came into realization that these kind of tombs which were found in the Jabal Hafid tombs Jabal, ha Jabal Hafid area uh, they uh, these tombs consist of um, maybe two to five people like the bodies of two to five people so these tombs do these kind of tombs were built for a limited number of people to bury a limited number of people very few people were buried in a single tomb clear now moving on to the burial artifacts you know what are artifacts right artifacts are the ruins whatever is left over from the past okay so if you look at the burial artifacts you know that in our first lesson we learned that the Danish archaeologists have come to UAE or started their excavations in the UAE in this uh, Jabal Hafid area in 1959 
We have learned that learned that in our first lesson. Remember that? Yes. And those Danish archaeologists have found out several ceramic vessels and copper artifacts in these tombs. And also, along with this, several beads, spearheads, and daggers were also discovered in these tombs. So, what do you think uh, these indicate? The finding of ceramic vessels, copper artifacts, beads and things, daggers, of course, it's made of metal, right? So, what can you conclude from this? From this, you understand that these artifacts indicate the importance of maritime trade across the Arabian Gulf. Especially, uh, these beads and uh, these beads and daggers and all, actually they were supposed to supposed to be imported from mesopotamia mesopotamia you know right the um present iraq okay so the ancient mesopotamia that uh, that was how the country was known by mesopotamia so these kind of things is beads and all were supposed to come from mesopotamia so just think how did the things of mesopotamia reach the hafid in ue so obviously you will understand that the people used to conduct trade through the Arabian Gulf okay through the Arabian Gulf people used to conduct maritime trade maritime means through water maritime trade in order to um, sustain their living so that is how the things of Mesopotamia and other civilizations even Indus Valley civilization which is now India and Pakistan uh, even from all those places also many things have been found in the UAE okay